The Hackett Review of the Grenfell Disaster has shone a spotlight on the need for building owners and their contractors to know what products and materials are in the buildings they develop, and there's an expectation that BIM will deliver that. My name is George Stevenson from Active Plan, and you'll quickly see that I'm some way from being an expert in producing videos. But I thought it might be useful to explain why so many BIM Level 2 projects are not providing what asset managers need and propose some simple changes contractors can make to ensure that the golden thread is actually delivered. Active Plan's business is about creating reliable asset information to enable clients to manage their buildings and estates. We take models and COBE files and federate them for testing and validation. When everything's fully coordinated with assets relating properly to spaces, we can populate any CAFM system. But the information we need is seldom provided. Although designers use BIM and create digital models, most of the information used by contractors and installers is analog, PDFs and printed files. Information about the products that were installed comes from specialist contractors and manufacturers. Few use 3D modelling, so they produce documents and PDFs creating a disconnect from the data model. FMs spend months trying to interpret O&M information and even commissioning surveys because the data they need just isn't there. Products and procurement schedules should be generated from the software, even if it's just Excel. It makes sense to read their digital outputs into the data model and generate the required documents from the coordinated data model, geometry and data. To ensure the right data is being provided in the right format, we need to start by providing the designers and the supply chain with a clearly defined asset information requirement. This creates the auditable standards and tests each submission from stage three onwards. A product library application can manage the product data used on this project and is used to create the project information model, which is progressively updated. The ONM is an output from the PIM and can be generated at any stage and the PIM transforms into an asset information model for long-term management and updating. To tie things together, the AIR creates a reference code that acts as a key that automatically connects databases with objects in the model, a golden key for the golden thread. And this can include the code the FMs use in their CAFM systems. This key goes into the Revit family and into each instance in the model. The door schedule includes the golden key in column D that was defined in the AIR. The important thing is that we're using the digital information through design, procurement and construction so it can help generate the digital O&M that can deliver the data required into all of the applications used for operations. So, the golden key is written into the Revit family, so it can automatically connect with real products installed and feed into the asset management systems. But all this depends on manufacturer's information being available in a computer-readable format. Manufacturers produce very comprehensive manuals and data sheets, which designers and contractors can read interpret what they need from them and apply them to their project. The problem is that they each do it slightly differently. Here we've got another boiler manufacturer and their data sheet is very similar but subtly different. Hanworthy call it boiler output and Hovel describes it as nominal heat output. That's easy for a human to interpret but not for computers. The same with water temperature and weight. But doesn't BIM sort all of that out? Not really. The BIM task group made a great start in 2012 by producing standard product data templates for 704 product types. And in the boiler template, they use the terms heat output, outlet temperature range, and gross weight and net weight as standard computer readable IFC definitions. That's why they've got those spaces between the words. The boiler template in the BIM toolkit that MBS produced three years later uses different terms duty output and operating temperature. 
Sibsey established their own team of industry experts to try and agree what property sets should be captured against each type of product. And they came up with different terms again. Even the BIM library services have the same problem. Here we have two boilers from Hamworthy, each described differently, and the valent boiler is different again. The same with BIM object. Here two boilers from the same manufacturer have different values. The one on the right has computer readable data, but the one on the left has numbers and text in the same field, making it unreadable. This isn't a criticism of BIM store or BIM object. They follow the format that's given to them by the manufacturer. We're part of an initiative trying to sort this out. The UK government has just committed 72 million to digitise the industry and Lexicon, or the templater, is part of that, trying to agree standardised data templates for all products and materials. The templater is now part of a suite of applications that help standardisation. For example, the product library transforms product data into a standard digital format. It focuses on the data, not the geometry, and isn't competing with BIM Store or BIM Object. In fact, we've developed interfaces with all the main BIM libraries, enabling designers and contractors to access a network of product libraries to create their own set of standards which can be continuously updated by manufacturers. The product library takes in data from any source and transforms it into a standard format. So boilers from any manufacturer are presented with common data sets. Data sheets for technical submittals or O&Ms are standardised. The product library also integrates with the project information model. So the asset teams can see which products went into which buildings. Perhaps one of the first examples of the golden thread really working. A caretaker can have a simple view of the products in his building and find the information about them without trawling through a 100-page PDF. Whereas ActiPlan can provide a simple floor plan for a visiting engineer who doesn't know where the plant room is. Those planning the visit can get it as a 3D connected model. Although we can read and write data into the models, we manage the asset data in proper databases in the cloud and use the Revit APIs to connect everything together. Here we drill into the boiler room, click on the boiler, and see the information that's been delivered using Kobe and connect it back to the product library. All this is great, but we're still dependent on designers and contractors providing the right data in the right format. People talk about the BIM model, when in fact there could be three or four hundred files in various formats that the main contractor needs to federate. The problem is that the tools they're using to do that are designed to federate geometry for clash detection. They're not designed to federate asset data. The information managers do their best and then pass on files to the client who struggles to make sense of it. They end up manually interpreting O&M files and some have to commission physical surveys to find out what was installed. We have to change this process. Manufacturers use standard components and assemblies, and we can standardise asset data. The client provides the supply chain with an explicit set of requirements, which can be automatically tested for compliance. Some of the more advanced clients are already on this journey. Here we have an AIR from a client. Really good work. But if you're only providing flooring, seeing all the requirements of all of the other disciplines is overwhelming. And in all that data, something really important for asset managers is missing. Why would any client not want to know when warranties expire? We've tried to make it simpler for each contractor, only asking them for information about the products they are providing. And what information do asset teams really need? For a start, there's no one FM application. People who occupy buildings might use a range of different systems, but no one likes to experience a broken toilet seat. So when they report it to the help desk, they want it fixing as soon as possible. 
But the PPM system is only populated with assets with scheduled works, so the information about seat types and fixings is buried in the O&M manual. The resolution takes two or three visits, and we have a broken toilet for longer than necessary. In fact, the asset teams, or their subbies, are likely to be using a range of different applications that really need digital information, so the O&M needs to be computer readable. Even the finance team needs digital asset information, so ActivePlan provides an asset information model that glues all this together. To ensure the asset data these different systems need is provided, the client can specify what they want for a building, the spaces people occupy, the systems that support them, and the assets in those systems. You can create libraries of space types for schools, healthcare, offices, in this case, residential units. The architects can work to a schedule of space types and all the other asset types have their own two or three page set of specific requirements so everyone knows exactly what's expected of them without having to refer to other documents. Here we have two room types. The kitchen diner just has basic requirements of a unique room number, net area and finished ceiling height whereas the stairwell needs information on floor coverings and finishes. The designer or contractor responsible for the heating system gets a specific set of requirements they need to provide. The asset team is able to drill into each individual asset type and switch off the data they don't need, such as colour or finish for a boiler, but ensure they get the information they do need, such as expected life. Some assets need more than standard COBE, so the template can include any specific additional attributes a product type needs, like outlet temperature range and the standard information for anything that's electrically powered. ActivePlan automatically produces the contractual requirements as a Word document with colour coding matching the COBE British standard, along with the work stage at which each set of information is required which can feed into a master information delivery plan. So we have complete libraries of asset types all connected with the correct Uniclass definition and their golden key reference. Having done all this work for one project, the team can then add these libraries to a corporate library for colleagues to use on other projects, reducing waste and improving quality. And the AIR network extends beyond individual projects and companies to enable firms willing to collaborate and share their standard libraries with others in the same sector, residential, education, health or commercial. If the contractor wants to add the required data into the model, they can and we can extract it from there. But it's probably easier for them to use the spreadsheet templates ActivePlan generates. To make it easier still for the contractor, the spreadsheets can be pre-populated with the information already added by the designers and the fields they need to complete highlighted. However, the simplest way for contractors will be using the growing product library where most of the data is already validated. In this case, the system is checking against the client's requirements and reports 83% complete. The validation summary shows that expected life and warranty information is missing. As an alternative to filling in spreadsheets, we provide the contractors with a simple online form. The form highlights what's missing and allows them to fill it in. Three different ways the contractor can provide the as-installed information, and we're now exploring a fourth by integrating with their procurement systems. This dashboard tells you which contractor is responsible for each system, in this case, internal doors, and how much they still need to provide for this work stage. The contractor can drill down and see the individual installed component, add a photo, and get a dashboard of the information that still needs capturing. If 360 photos are being captured, they can become part of the record information. ActivePlan brings the 360 photos or point clouds into the asset model and allows individual specialists who don't need to visit the site to review them and tag them to the products in the library. 
So we end up with an asset list for each room enhanced with a visual record that will be invaluable in years to come to support condition surveys and compliance. If you want to join this growing collaboration of people trying to change the process, please get in touch.